The interim executive director of Project Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC has raised an alarm over allegation of about three trillion naira ghost contracts in the commission. He alleges that an unnamed seventh senator involved in the screening of the NDDC board was behind 300 contract jobs with the commission. Now, according to him, 120 of those contracts have been fully paid for by the commission without the senator mobilizing workforce to sign. I still have my guest with me in the studio, Nabil Obasi, legal practitioner. Thank you very much. Thank you. And John Wesley, political analyst. Glad you could uh, stay with us. Thank when, you. way, let, let me start with you this time. Were you surprised when you heard the news and you read the story of this humongous amount, NDDC, owing three trillion naira? That is not a surprise in Nigeria. When it comes to embezzling, stealing of money, uh, weighing of money, salaries or whatever. It's not new. But my question is this, three trillion. How much is the budget for 2019? Or at least everything put together, how much? If you had little to eat, that is the entire budget of a nation. For just one place, Ninja Delta region. Three trillion. Nobody can account for it. How is it possible for this to happen? And I mean, apparently nobody was even mobilized. How, how did he clear through to get his money? Nobody was mobilized. They are, they are talking about, about 120 who have been paid. That's what I'm saying. They yes. didn't mobilize to the, um, to the site. That is the question I was going to ask you. You are talking about contracts. I mean, from my level of understanding of when you say contract, in the first place, the contract should have a name. It means that by now, we should be having 120 names of so-so contract, sheet packing contract, uh, plastic uh, design contract, um, clearing of oil oh yeah, on top of the water, con in a different name about 120 we should be having. But we don't have a name. We don't have a name. So 120 contracts that they already paid, and knowing enough, there is an unnamed senator. So why do you think this allegation is coming? Shouldn't there have been, because that was what the, the committee, the three-man committees to help prepare for the audit that is going to happen uh, in the NDDC, shouldn't they have waited until maybe they're done with their investigation before coming up and naming the said senator who has these contracts? I think, the, first of all, they're supposed to uh, wait on to the conclusion of the investigation because it is the investigation that will bring out all the shady dealings that have been going on and how the money um, has, uh, how the money exchange hands. So it's the investigation, it's the conclusion from the investigation that will review whether the money, whether the contractor actually performed their job for them to have been paid or not. So I think they should have waited until the, uh, the report of the investigation, then they can now come out and say, okay, this amount of money was being siphoned. What do you say these instances like this that open up um, uh, the room for failure of such committees and auditing and commission because you're putting the person on a lot to know that he's being watched? Wouldn't that person want to, you know, clamp no down and ensure that nothing comes out of it? Well, the truth of the matter is in Nigeria, when you set up committee to investigate stuff relating to money, it's only another avenue to enrich some people. That's the truth. You set up committee. How, how do you mean? No, it's the truth. Felicity. No, Let no, me tell how, what you, do you mean? Explain there is a situation in Plus TV, and then Plus TV decides to set up a committee for us to look into a situation. And then uh, you and I know those people who are actually involved, and then they come to us and they are like, don't worry, we know that this is where the matter will end. That's but a strong rest, allegation you're putting mm -hmm. to the man who is supposed to be an independent mind helping. No, but the your, 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 your syntax is clear. Supposed. I mean, it's very clear. I mean, if I want to understand what you're saying, supposed. Does it, it's, it's not affirmative. It's not in the affirmative. You, you yourself, you use the word support. See, let me tell you, we have had situations here in this country that, in fact, people fight to become chairmen of such committees. 
You are talking of three trillion. My sister, somebody should be going home with one billion at the end of that kind of committee. That is what happens here. Even in the house where people fight to be chairman of social committee, is it? Is, do you think it's because of the benefit for, of, uh, of the masses? That's why some people are fighting to be chairman or to be member of a particular committee. The essence is to also share the money. Do you see this audit bringing results? Okay, so I, I think it should depend on the quality of the auditing firms that they would, uh, you know, that they would employ. So if they employ reputable audit firms, which I wouldn't want to mention because I wouldn't want to, you know, um, um, you know, go against the rule of book as, you know, advertising. So I, I think, yes, if they really engage professionals, they should bring out um, unfettered, they should bring out uh, transparent reports. And that should be able to guide the members of the committee to take the next step on, you know, how to know how the money went. Okay, I almost forgot about this video. Let's watch the president speak on this matter here. Of acts that dictate, you know, the running of these uh, institutions where we are putting so much money, especially the NDDC, because uh, the amount of money which the federal government is religiously allocating to NDDC, we'd like to see the results on the ground. The project must be verifiable. I mean, you just can't say you spend so many billions and then when you go, it's only the lagoon, you see, and so you don't, you don't see the structures that are claimed to have been done. Those that are responsible for that, I think, will eventually be asked to explain certain issues. The president says it's humongous amount. So do you see um, something this time around? Because uh, administration after administration has come. We've had committees set up. Some didn't even have the, you know, the strength to take on the corruption uh, in that commission. Do you see a, a, a recommendation, a punishment as an offshoot of this investigation? Well, um, I have always been an advocate of a kind of punishment. But um, I have heard people say that um, it, can never, it cannot happen anymore. You know, there were days where we had firing squad. There were days where we had all manner of kind of punishment that would make you run away from stealing, that would make you run away from all manner of stuff. Now, uh, Nobu mentioned something the other time, talking about reputable... Um, Individuals. You know, I mean, reputable Audit brand, firm. you know, taking up the audit and all of that. We know of a reputable name in this country under the watch of President Olusha Gwambasajoti. Tomorrow, they have not been able to answer to a particular audit they carried out. Are you, are, you, are you implying that we don't have reputable I am people? not saying so. I am not saying they are not reputable. You see, reputable, when you say reputable, is name, or popular, and more. But the truth of the matter is we are talking of powers that be when it comes to money. You see, the, there are certain things. When, when there is a clocking of hand like this at some point, stories change in this country until we have a process that we make things work without the hands of individual having to do with money. Considering Akwabio's history, do yes. you see him making any impact what is in this history? ministry? What he was able to do in Akwabio State? What was he able to do? I should be asking you. No, you because I guess. want to understand. I want okay, to do, Okay, let me ask, let me, let me rephrase the question mm, and say, yes. with the way Akwabio is coming, uh -huh. with the help of the federal government, yes. do you see him being able to accomplish much reform with the NDDC? Well, if, if he wants to actually remain in the good books of the president, you heard the president say something. As much as a whole lot of people may not like the president, I'm not really a fan of whatever party or lot. But the point is this. He said they invest a whole lot of funds into the NDDC. And when they go, some persons just come to show you. You see, Lagoon, show you a place where three trillion naira has been, you know, expended and all of that. Nobody can account for. You see what the president said. If you want to go deep. You will have an understanding that the president has given you a hint that we have been putting money here, even before the president himself. They have been putting money there to see nothing. Nothing. I mean nothing. Now, the point is this, very simple. If you must achieve result, I, 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 let me hope, let me hope that Goswila Pabio will be able to do this one 
and write his name in gold ink. Let me hope. Okay, he, even while you're still divided about his ability to do the job, there are already people coming out to say the president should remove him as minister of the Niger Delta. Uh, they're given the reason that he set up a committee to prep ahead of the audit that has been you know, instructed by the president. What do you make uh, of this call at this time? Is it an indication? Uh, I think the group that came up with this were forum of APC state chairman. They've okay. come to the president. We also have another group. Um, I, I don't think the I've heard of them. A of Niger, Niger Delta yes, group yes. Uh, saying NDPC. that, uh, yes, rejected the interim committee and saying that Apabio should uh, go. Is it that maybe they're afraid of what the man can do? Or what do you make of it? Okay, so Apabio has uh, prepped um, um, a, say, a subcommittee, you know, to. Um, Kind of you know look into this matter before the main committee so and you see people coming out to tell him to ask the president to remove him so i don't think that call should be coming at uh, should be you know i don't think that's that, that's the call which they should be making at this point i think they should give him the free hand to operate i think they should give him the free hand to get to the root of it then if at the point He's, you know, he's in the pro if, if he gets the if he doesn't get the, the job done, then they can call for his removal. I think they should give him free hand to operate. Okay, there's also a group, um, they said they are the oil and gas host communities of Nigeria, and they're urging the president to return the NDDC to the presidency. Remember, it has moved to the Niger Delta Ministry, mm -hmm. and they're saying that it may not be effectively supervised uh, under the NDDC. What's your uh, reaction to that? Well, uh, from those end, that's to tell you that, you see, I watched um, a particular movie. I've seen similar movies like that. I don't know if you've seen Blood and Oil. Yes, I know. have. And um, for every time I see movies like that, I feel like waking up in the morning, leading a formidable struggle to defend the Niger Delta. I'm not from there. I feel their pain. It should be an iniquity it should be a sin that somebody from the Niger Delta, you know, we still live in a mud house. We still live in, you know, there are people who get these funds. They hold on to it. I am of the opinion that they know what they are saying. If they are saying that it should not be there, it should be, you know, taken back. But it is way. still, this NDDC is not being manned by people from other parts of the state. It is also people from that Niger Delta region. The people that are being accused are probably also from that Niger Delta region because you can't come from another region and come and hold sway in the Niger Delta region. So it, wouldn't you say that, I mean, we're basically biting our own hand, I mean, uh, killing our own self? They're not killing themselves. If you said you want blood and oil, there was this lady there who stood up to fight with some other people who were they fighting after all they all came from came that same years. community they know the problem so if they are fighting they have seen the problem they know that these people are not representing their interests they know that these people they drink from a refined water so isn't they it, shouldn't they now shouldn't water? they now let me bring you in a noble shouldn't they now be sort of excited and more encouraging of this effort to revamp the administration of NDDC and make sure that for the purpose for which it was set up is attained. So I think they, they should be uh, they should be excited to see that happening to Niger Delta. They should be excited to see that they're trying to uh, the federal government is trying to make uh, the uh, the commission for the people of the Niger Delta and for their own benefit as well. So I think they should be excited. But then again, you know, human factor would come into play, which is that. Naturally, persons get tends to be more tends to be selfish in terms of their gains. So, in order to forestall that, then there should be um, a kind of structure in, Niger, in, the, in the Niger Delta Commission, where, whereby people are being monitored. I mean, say the chairman, the, uh, the, the those people in charge of the Niger Delta. So, there should be like a transparent structure for them. So, they should they should ensure accountability in the commission. So, so when there is say an allegation of corruption or fraud in, in the commission, it should be clearly investigated. Because at the end of the day, it's still people from Niger Delta that mans the, the commission. So I think 
more, much emphasis should be laid on transparency and accountability of the individuals and mandate commission. Your final thoughts, please. Well, my final thought remains that uh, until the people from the Niger Delta take what belongs to them in their own hands solidly. You see, when people speak, there are two things. It could be that for selfish reasons. It could also be that we know you. You are our brother. We know your antecedent. We know what you can do. On this matter, you cannot represent us. I must thank you ever so kindly for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for coming. And thank you for staying with us. Well, we're not done yet. We'll go on a short break for a PLOS package. And when we return, I will give you my take. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has promised residents of the Kuji Area Council it will complete abandoned projects within the zone. The Minister of State for the FCT, Ramato Tijani, gave this assurance as she took a tour of the area council to appraise ongoing construction works within the zone. The Minister called on all contractors handling various projects to return to site, saying the FCT administration would not condone shoddy handling of contracts within the federal capital. She also assured that the administration is working around the clock to improve security within the Kuji metropolis. We've just gone around the government uh, uh, area council. Uh, we have seen so far uh, the two efforts done by the area council chairman. Uh, we have seen many abandoned projects already uh, um, uh, in the area council. The stadium, uh, some primary schools, primary health care uh, structures, and um, uh, um, school blocks. We have also seen um, the forestry that is also converted into a kind of semi-market, but to, as far as I am concerned today, uh, it has created um, a hiding place for all criminals and criminal activities that could possibly take you know, place in that um, arena. And we are looking into that to convert that place into very useful, you know, a very useful activity kind of place that will benefit the people of um, Kuji Area Council. Uh, besides that, we have observed the peacefulness of the people of Kuji, and we also call upon them to continue to remain peaceful. That we are looking into the areas of insecurity, and we can see we are enjoying some calm. Uh, averagely, it is it is okay. For even this road we have applied now, Kuji Gwagwaleda Road, we will be looking into, we will be looked into, and we have. Um, uh, there is even a contract already awarded and we've called upon the contractor to revisit that and uh, come back to uh, return to site for the completion of this road. So I think by and large, uh, Kuji will enjoy uh, a reasonable amount of development for there is no suburb or satellite town in the federal capital city that is deserving to be abandoned. And it, is not, it will not be tolerated. The seeming endless abuse of the people of the Niger Delta must stop. But first, the people need to know the names and the faces of their tormentors, who sadly have sons and daughters, who they have trusted to help elevate their living conditions after years of abuse from oil exploration. But I worry that with so many powerful interests best served with the status quo or with covering their tracks of criminal looting, the move to audit by this present administration of President Muhammad Buhari will be resisted. Corruption fighting back, literally. The honours therefore lies on the President and of course the Niger Delta Minister, Gotswe Lakwabi, as well as the team that they are able to put up to ensure that these saboteurs do not succeed and that there is no sacred cow when punishment is meted out. They must also ensure that the stolen monies are retrieved and utilized for the long-deserved development of the Niger Delta. That's our program tonight. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye for now.